Lithuania. Uh, are you sure it's not Singapore? I would not get that. <laughs> I'm pretty Singapore just for a dark cause. <laughs> what was that, girl? Did you start it? Yes. Okay, and I started mine. Hi, I'm Jack Buer, and this is my presentation on the physical description and behavioral analysis of the Eastern Box Turtle in Overish, Tennessee. So, you may be asking, why is this important? And turtles are actually a keystone creature in the environment. So, turtles are omnivores, and, and they drink the water supply in the environment. So, if a turtle population is declining, it's a direct indication that the overall environmental health is suffering. And this can be to extreme extents, because turtles are becoming more and more endangered. And that's just one of the trends that found, are found in other papers. This paper, this, uh, this presentation will show you the, the trends that we found in Oak Ridge that will compare to other, that I will compare to other studies to see if this population is declining or is, in general, is healthy or not. So the organization I work with is called Creso, and it currently is the largest um, Eastern Box Turtle project in the world. And we mainly focus on areas in, in Oak Ridge called called the FES. So this FES is 900 acres big and it has, holds a variety of different research projects. Creso mainly works in this wooded area. These white areas are for snake projects and so we usually don't search those too much, but it just in general, it's a very, it's a, it has a very big population density and is, it is a good place to search. I cannot show you the exact location because of turtle poaching, but this is a general map of the area. So we use three different methods to find these turtles. The first method is grid searching, which is when multiple researchers stand in a line like this and walk 100 meters. And this is not the most effective way of doing it, but it's the initial way we do it, to find turtles for telemetry, and then once, then we get the turtles and we analyze them. It's not, and then telemetry is the second most effective way, but it's for a different reason. Telemetry is when you attach a, a transmitter to a turtle so that it's super glued onto their shell, and then you have a receiver and you search for it. And so, and the transmitter sends out beeps, and the receiver picks them up, and they get the beeps get bigger as you get closer. And so, it's a game of warmer or colder, as, like you until you you have a large enough beep that you can see the turtle beep. Um, and we don't. I, in this paper, I did not analyze the areas of the turtles or the location of them, but I did. In, it is important to include it because a lot of the turtles I used for this are incidentals or turtles we found on accident that we that we found on the way to find other turtles. So those those turtles were part of the population, while the multiple captures from the telemetry was not. Dog searches is the most effective way and the one that is used the most in this paper. So these are these dogs are able to smell the turtles and they are very highly trained to do so. These these dogs can eat a single dog can find three times as many turtles as a, a whole group of humans. So, and there's about eight, seven or eight dogs. So it's just a much faster way. Creso only has a, the available availability to use these dogs about four days or about in a year, which is very small, which is a small amount. So we make sure we use, during those days we use them a lot. And the, mo the reason these, that the searches, this, this way of searching is the most effective is because whenever we use dog searches, people from the University of Illinois come. And these people bring t equipment to do blood tests on the turtles. And this blood test gets an accurate representation of gender. And so whenever you don't do the blood work and try to guess the turtle's gender, professionals have a 60% accuracy. That's basically guessing. So it's very important whenever I'm comparing the two genders to only use the to use the genders gathered from dog searches because they are the true genders and I'm not misgendering any of the turtles. So that is the re that's the reason why we use, I use dog searches. So what do we do when we actually get the turtles? So there's, there's a, a, I think 20 different measurements we gather, but I only use these five. So size, weight, and length. So just in so we, may, we usually measure the carapace, I'll go into all of this later and get the width and the height and the length just with different measurement, d d different tools. And then we also gather things about their behavior, so like what habitat they tend to be in, and like when we capture them, and then what temperature they tend to be. 
We gather, gather temperature in two ways. Air temp, which is the temperature like all around us, and then the substrate temperature, which is the exact location of the turtle. And, the, and that can be different than the air temp, as we'll go into later. So before I go on, I want to do a quick, a quick, quick show of what turtle anatomy, to show you what I'm talking about. The, the carapace length is when you measure from this end to this end, width is from here to here, and height is from here to here. So all of those are the ways, those are the ways to get the physical measurements. Um, when a turtle is in form, it means all their limbs are tucked in. And as you can see here, the turtle doesn't have any limbs showing, but at here the turtle is walking around. So, so this is not in form and it's active and this is in form. Another thing is this, I, I, talked to a, I haven't talked to a carapace length, but that's the main thing we measure. Carapace is the upper part of the shell and not the, the lower part of the shell is called the plastron that's an important difference to make. And then the final thing that I need to talk about is the annuli. And these annuli are the rings of a turtle. So they are, they're hard to see in this picture, but each shell has their, own, has their own amount of rings. And these rings are called the annuli. And these annuli are, rough, are a rough estimation of age. So when you cut open a tree and you see the different rings of a tree, that shows you the age. Annuli is like that, it's not exact, like it was previously thought, but it, the old, more annuli rings, the older the turtle is. And another measure of annuli is how deep it is. So if a turtle is, if a turtle's annuli is very deep into the shell, it's called well-defined. Well defined. And then there's four different measurements. Super well-defined, somewhat, well somewhat well-defined, somewhat smooth, and very smooth. And so as the, the smoother it gets, the older the turtle is. Because over time, the shell it like flattens out. So that, that's another indicator of age. Because as the smoother they get, the older they are. So now to go on to the data. So this, this is a graph of the, of the lengths of the turtle. Not lengths, but the measurements. And I'm comparing the male and female. And as you can see, the males have a longer length and a width, but at a less height than a, a female. And even though these numbers look close to each other, they are actually, they are actually statistically significant. So there is a difference in carapace length, width, and height between males and females or at least our paper found this to be true. So this is a kind of a harder graph to explain. It's the scale ratio of annual definition count to gender. So why is it scaled? Why am I scaling the females up to the males? Well, we have, th for every three females, there's five males. So that's a very disproportionate amount. And so I had to, so when, when comparing the ages, I had to bring the females up to the amount of ma males. And so that's why these numbers are, if you add them up, they're all equal even though in reality that doesn't reflect the true population. And so, as you can see, very smooth and well-defined. So this is, so basically, youngest to oldest. And as you can see, females are on average older than the males are. And so, why is this happening? We don't know. This could be very concerning. Especially because, like I said, there is much less females than males. So usually, if a females are living longer, that means there are gonna be more of them but there's not. In fact, there's much more males. So this leads to the question, why is there an absence of females? But we'll get into that. We'll see what other papers find before we can make any judgments. So this is air temperature versus substrate temperature. So like I said, air temperature is around here, substrate temperature is like on the ground, exactly, exactly where the turtle is. So the first thing we can gather from this data is that the, sub, the substrate temperature is much, is much cooler than the air temp. So that means that, because tur turtles are ectotherms, or cold-blooded, so they, are, they can't regulate their body heat as well. And so they have to stay in areas that are colder to maintain a body heat. And we found, and that's the trend we found. The other thing this graph compares is informed and, informed and non-informed. So as you can see, both bars are less, are, or are colder. So whenever a turtle is informed, it is colder outside than whenever they are more active and not informed. So, and this is, this is primarily done in the morning, so it, the data can be skewed, but that is the research that we found. So this is a, a count of all the habitats of the turtles. So as you can see, forest is by far the most populous one. Field and edge are significant, but they're not nearly as much as forest. And other, which is every other habitat is all, that we search in, is almost none. So, what, so the main thing we can gather from this is that there's turtles prefer to be in the forest. 
But another thing this graph shows is that just the amount of turtles crested with fatties each year. So as you can see, it's, it's a lot during 2009, but then it quickly goes down to during 2014, 20, 2015, which it's very, we don't know why this happens. It could be a lot of just Cresso, just not searching as much. And this is before COVID, so it's not because of that or anything. But we want to know why this happened, but it could, it's not necessarily that the turtle population is declining, it could just be Cresso that's not finding any turtles. So microhabitat. So microhabitat is the habitat inside a habitat. So it can be anything from as specific to on leaves or near, near sap oozing tree, or just anything slightly bigger that's not the whole habitat. And Cresto measured 20 different microhabitats, and only two of them were statistically significant. One of them was on leaves, and the other was near water. And as you can see, most turtles are on leaves. 60% of turtles, that, almost 60% of turtles that we found were on leaves, compared to the second highest being 12% that are near logs. So that shows us that turtles really prefer to be on leaves than, and somewhat on near logs than any other microhabitat. So I just showed you all the data. What does the data all mean in relative, in re relative to other papers? So is there different varieties? And so this is, the, this is gonna analyze the physical measurements. So other papers found that carapace length is significant. So as I stated before, the carapace length between male and females is statistically significant. Other papers found this to be true. However, we also found that height and width were statistically significant. However, other papers did not find this. So, we, so our paper differed in that way from them. I, we don't know why, but it, it, I, it's not a huge concern. It's not a health issue or anything. It's just we found that to be a difference between males and females. So the overall size of our, of our population, so the width, length, and the height, are about average. So, and so it's, it's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. And it's, and as I'm about to show you, it's, they are actually fairly, fairly healthy. So this graph right here was, I got from the, the biggest paper ever published on box turtles across the whole state of North Carolina. And so it, it's comparing the survival probability to carapace length. So as you can see, as carapace length goes up, survival probability also goes up. And so I marked the males and the females. So, I, so both of them have about an 85 or slightly higher survival probability, probability rate, which is fairly high in relation to this whole graph. And so this is, this is good for the population. It shows that t our turtles are living, which is, which is great for health. Um, um, so, so as I said before, we found, we found that females live longer than males. However, when you compare this to other studies, this is not true at all. Females and males have no significant differences in survival rate. Why is, so why is our paper different than all the other papers that I looked at? More research is good. That's, that's the only conclusion I can really gather, but it is alarming. There should, be, there should be an equal amount of males to females that have smooth annuli, very smooth annuli, but there just isn't. This can be, we don't know what's causing this, but it is alarming. And the other contradictory thing is that there is more males in the population than females, compared to other papers saying that they are, there's an even amount of males and females. So it's, it's really weird that there is a, lot, a lack of young females in our, in our population. This should not be happening. There, 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 there may be a shit, something, an outside force shifting this population in a negative way. And if there's a lot more males than females, that can cause problems in future generations. So, and so it is very important that more research is done so that we can actually get a real analysis of this. Um, so comparing air, sub, air temp versus sub temp. So, but our paper agrees with the general consensus that turtles prefer to be in a cooler sub temp than air temp, either in form or not. So it, all, almost all papers find that turtles prefer to be in, a, they, in colder areas. So that's, that's good that, that our paper supports that. However, our paper directly goes against the trend that turtles prefer to be informed when it is warmer to avoid midday heat. We found that turtles were informed when it was colder. So that's a direct, and it goes directly against what other papers have found. However, this may be caused by our, because Cresto mainly searches in the mornings, and so this could throw it off because of that mid mornings are not the same as midday heat. So more research would be, need, be, need to be done in the midday time span to actually get an accurate representation of if, if, this, if our paper disputes this trend. But 
it is important to realize that our paper does go di directly against it. And our paper does carry some, or some weight because it's, it is the second largest paper or has the second largest population. So the fact that our population is this large and is going against these commonly held trends is, is not worrying, but it is important to realize and it has significance. So this paper also found that most turtles are found in the woods or in the forest. For, and this is true against almost true for almost all papers and it's just the general health hypothesis that turtles habitat is the forest. So th this is the place to go searching for turtles. Microhabitat. So this, so the general consensus is that turtles hate rocky areas. They avoid them at all costs. And our paper found this to be true. None of the none of the areas that we searched had micro had them on the rocky areas at all. And, and most of them were on leaves. It's sixty percent. So th it's very. And if they're on leaves, they're not on rocks. So our paper can, agrees with this general consensus about microhabitat. So now for the overall turtle health. So the overall population is healthy, and this is, can be seen from this, the overall Kipper's high, the general size of the population is massive compared to other ones. But as we said, as I mentioned before, there's some worrying results that need to be answered. As there is an absence of many young females that would balance the population. And so something, or it's, it could be finding problems, but it could also be that something is causing this shift. And it is important to figure out why to see if the environment is healthy or not. And more paper is going to be needed to analyze this in order to. I can't give you the answers with this data, but this is a good future topic of research. So, and after all this analysis, there's two main future questions that need to be answered, which is why is there a lack of young females in the population? And do turtles go informed during the midday heat? These, are, these two questions, or these two ideas were directly contrary to popular hypothesis. So it is important to get a more accurate representation to, before I can dispute, truly dispute any of these claims. Thank you. Yay. What was one obstacle or challenge you encountered while performing the research and how did you address it? Right, so I'm not the best at using Excel, and I, what, and I got a data, an Excel sheet full of 2,300 turtles, and I was I, I did not know what to do. But I worked with my mentor to figure out how to use Excel more, and then how to like, and what I really wanted to gather because you have I had all that data, and I I, I didn't know what I wanted to find from it, and so I, once I got that and I figured out how to do the math, I was able to overcome. Um, so I see that you suggested two more, or two questions to follow up. What might be the real world implications or consequences of answering those questions? Right, and so the, as I said before, turtles are very important in, the, in determining the overall environment. And if the turtle population is declining here, that, that shows that the overall environment is declining as well, which can be really dangerous to, towards, for a majority of reasons. But, and this, paper, and this paper also supports the general trend that turtle population is declining nationally. And so it's not just here, it's everywhere. And so this paper helps, I would say, raise awareness and, and form hypotheses to stop this trend from, destroying, or from hurting the environment more. What of your, which of your sources was the most influential and in what way is that influence apparent in your final conclusion or result? So the most influential source was the source that about the whole state of North Carolina, because besides being the most credible one, just because of the sheer size of the population, which is which is like two thousand more turtles than even like the third highest paper, it's very important. It adds a lot of credibility, and and it also made that graph of Kerbis length to health or to survival probability. Sorry. And that was really important in my study because I was trying to see the general health of the environment. And because I had that graph, I was able to say the, the overall population has a high survival probability rate. And so they are in more, more healthy. So that paper was extremely influential.